Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, our guest is Karen Tyden. Karen is a mind hacker, coach, and hypnotherapist. She is an expert in creating rapid change and has the ability to understand and hack the mechanics behind people's subconscious patterns to create new and better strategies in life. With mind hacking, coaching, and hypnosis, Karen helps to upgrade people's operating systems and resolve blockages, let go of old limiting beliefs, change mental structures, see new possibilities, find the courage and the driving force to make the most of their opportunities and to follow their hearts. In 2019, she published her first book, Mind Hacking for Rebels in Sweden. This year, her book will be available in the United States. Welcome, Karen. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you for the great introduction. Um, and I'm so happy to be with you. A little bit nervous, but excited as well. Well, don't be nervous. And we're happy to have you here um, all the way from Sweden. Technology is wonderful. Yes, it is, <laughs> truly. So um, your book is about mind hacking and you know, you're an expert in mind hacking. What, why is it so effective and what is it? Can you explain to us what it is? Yes, absolutely. So mind hacking is a, it's a very deep process where you get access to the subconscious mind. And to, to explain it very easily, you can say that you can hack the autopilot that is running your whole day. So some people say that the autopilot in you runs up to 95% of your day. So um, the, the autopilot is okay to have that when we are doing daily tasks. So, because if you would like to make a cup of coffee or put on your trousers, you're really grateful that it's an automated, automated um, thing you do. You don't have to think about it. But the problem is that also some bad behaviors and bad strategies in life, they can also become automated. So what I do is that these automated behaviors, they become a strategy and you use them in all kinds of situations, even if they're not beneficial for you anymore. So like I said, with some coaching and some deep, deep hypnosis, we can access the subconscious mind and find these um, these patterns and these strategies and these kind of habits that we're still using 20, 30, 40 years later and start to dissolve them and to, to find out a better way to, to act in certain situations. Is anybody using this technique besides you? Do you know of other people who are using it? Are you training other people, other professionals? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, hypnosis is, uh, many people use hypnosis, but I had tweaked it a couple of more times and I traveled like all over the world to train with some really smart and good people. So I'm blending all of the techniques together. So um, I couldn't say that I know that someone is using specifically my kind of techniques, but if we would separate the techniques, they would probably recognize them and say that, oh, I know that technique and I don't know that technique. But for me, it's more like blending and, and putting myself on the, the person's platform and see exactly to tailor it to them and say, what do you need to solve your problem and to move forward? So I know in Sweden that I'm exclusive here and um, I don't know about the rest of the world. I don't train other people yet, but uh, I would like to in the future because that would be able to help more people. Yeah, and today with Zoom, you can train people all over the world without leaving your home. Yeah. Which is really nice. Well, you were talking about old programming. Yeah. Um, how do these programs come into existence? Well, there is a 500 year old saying from the Roman Catholic Jesuit order that give me a child before seven years old and I will give you the man. So uh, how nature works is that when we are born here on this earth, we have to learn the rules very fast in order to feel safe and to feel loved and get attention. So the child's mind below seven years old is like a sponge. 
So it learn extremely quickly how to get safety, how to get love and how to get attention. And so that's when it's happening. So all the rules are set back then or not maybe all the rules, but most of them. And the child is like watching, uh, what do I do? What do I do here to get love or to get safety? And then it plays into strategy in life. And this is the problem is that when the brain have found a strategy, it keeps that strategy for life, even if it's counterproductive in the future. So let's take for an instance, um, a little child, if a little girl, and she has a brother who is a little bit more wild than her. And she notices her parents yelling at him or disciplining him. Uh, so she draws the conclusion that I don't want to be yelled at because that's scary and I want to have my parents approval because then I'm secure and I survive. So she notices that when she plays by herself and she's very calm and she's very likable, her parents uh, is smiling at her saying that she's a good girl. So that becomes an automatic behavior and strategy that she then uses her whole life. And it's a, it's a good strategy when she's a little child because her parents is very kind to her and, 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 and praising her. But then if we move into life today, now she's an adult woman and the problem starts because maybe at work, uh, she is overlooked when it comes to promotion because she does her work, she's really good at it, but she doesn't, you know, take her place and say, hi, I'm here and I can do this. She doesn't speak up during meetings or she allow people to, to kind of take advantage of her and saying, do this and do that. And she doesn't put her foot down and say, I don't want to do this. I want to do this instead. So now the strategy to be nice and be low key and, and doing her own business, suddenly it's a problem. Okay. I, and what about, you know, that's coming from childhood. Do you also yeah. get into um, programming that has gone on in a past life? Yes, I do. So I, I like to, to think of it like this. I don't care where the problem started. If it's in uh, your adult life or your uh, childhood on a previous life, as long as we can find a root cause or sometimes causes, because it can be different kind of causes uh, making the problem. So yes, I often like maybe 20% of my clients, we come back to past lives and it's a huge realization for them when they, when they confirming to themselves that, oh, I didn't know that. So I still have that problem. So they often ask me, so do you mean that my soul kind of took that problem and just transferred it to, to this life? And I said, yeah, maybe your soul wanted you to solve this problem and you couldn't solve it in the past life. So we're just moving the problem, <laughs> like the automatic version of it, we just move it to this life and we try to solve it again. So yes, I do. Yeah, that's interesting. So are they able to see their past lives in that concept and then go through the yeah. process of healing it? Yes? Yes, yes. So when I work with clients in past life, I'm not that um, oriented towards exactly who they were and the year or the environments. I'm more focused on what is taking place back then that is still repeating itself today. Mm -hmm. So what did you experience back then in a past life that it's you're still doing it today and when they realize that the problem is there and how it's connected and why they are like that they often can let go of it and they often can change it to a more productive behavior oh that's wonderful um what, yeah you know so what do you what can we do in in everyday life to change old ineffective programming how can we shift without having you next to us? Yeah, that's a little bit of a tricky question because sometimes you need me or someone else that you trust to help you go through this process because sometimes it's really hard to be, you know, both the observer of the problem and guiding yourself and then be in the problem with all the emotions and fears and everything. 
But there are small hacks, and that's what I'm writing about in my book, that small hacks you can do yourself. So one thing is that when you react in a certain way that you know yourself is a little bit childish or out of character, then you know this is the autopilot. And it doesn't matter if it's like a childlike response or something that it's out of character because it maybe comes from another life. You can just say, okay, this is the autopilot. There's nothing wrong with me. It's just the autopilot activated right now. And what you can do is to say, just stop to the autopilot. And you can turn a little bit inward and saying to this little child or a younger version of yourself that, you know what, we don't have to react this way today. We can react in a, a different way. I'm old enough today. I have more resources. I'm smarter. I have more experience. So just let us take a couple of deep breaths and think about what can I do instead? And if you are overwhelmed with emotion, because that's often the problem when you are reactive, you are uh, filled with a lot of emotion. You, you can't think clearly. I'm just saying to myself, hit the pause bat button, Karen. Do that right away. And I just kind of freeze. And then I let all the emotions, <laughs> you know, like going crazy inside. And there are some scientific studies that shows that these kind of emotions, they just last for about 90 seconds. So if you just allow all the emotions to go wild and crazy in there, just hit the pause button and wait for 90 seconds. And after that 90 seconds, you can just say to yourself, okay, now I calm down. How do I want to react in this situation? What would I like to say in order to get a better response from the other person? And so in a situation where somebody is bringing up those kind of emotions would no longer serve them, but, but they've been doing it for, say, 30 or 40 or 50 years, um, and, yeah. and they want to let it go, um, it's a yeah. part of themselves that they're letting go. So there yeah. obviously is grief in letting go a part of the self and rebuilding, you know, yeah. the new self it, it, it's, it, without that piece. So do you yeah. go through, do people like, do they suffer through the rebuilding or do they embrace it? It's so very different. So um, with the easy cases, I have a client who's really embracing the new changes and feel that I can let go of that old habit or behavior or that part of myself. Uh, it's totally okay. And they often get the reaction, I'm free and I love it. And but there are other clients who feel uh, some kind of grief, letting go of that part because it served them. And if they do, I tend to have a small little ceremony with that part and saying, thank you for protecting me or serving me when I was a child, keeping me safe and loved and everything. And I don't eliminate that part because I think that elimination does not always work. It's better to just be grateful for that part and say that you're still a part of me uh, that wants to be loved and feel safe, but you don't have to work as hard mm -hmm. anymore that you did before. So giving that part some kind of acknowledgement and be grateful and including that part in, in your own inner tribe and saying that you are okay, but you don't have to work as hard for it because um, you can maybe rest for a little bit or go on vacation. That often works better. And sometimes there are people, like you said, who rebel and say that I don't want to let the go of this behavior apart. And it's because it's a negotiation with the subconscious. It's, you can't go just in and decide and say to your subconscious, let go of this problem or this behavior because the subconscious says, yeah, but you know, it's still valid to have this because it protects the, the person or there is a, a secondary gain of it. So it's, you have to kind of communicate with the subconscious with some client for a long period of time, maybe two, three, four sessions to really get the subconscious to understand that this is the best thing for the person. And if you 
didn't, if you don't communicate very well, the subconscious will say, nope, <laughs> I don't want to change that. So it's kind of a, a process where you teach the subconscious mind that you can use other alternatives to, to, uh, to act or to react or to solve the problem. And after a while, the subconscious feels like, well, maybe you had a point there, Karen. Uh, maybe I, I can think about it till next time and then slow you, slowly you help them to release it. So it depends really on the person. So what you were talking about before is parts therapy. Um, yeah. So do you use parts therapy, like, it, like, you know, death, like when someone loses a parent and they're four years old and it's not handled properly, properly, how do you, how do you help them, you know, move along with that? Because it's so deep. Yes, it is. So with parts therapy, you can either do it internal with different parts of yourself, but you can also do it external. And like I said before, it doesn't matter if it's uh, someone who is from your childhood, a past life, if, the, if it's a parent who's not longer with us, you can still make that connection. It depends also a little bit um, about the client because some people don't believe in um, you know, reincarnation or another life and they can't really grasp that they can talk to um, a deceased parent or something. But then I can turn it around and say to them, well, just make it like imagination or a fantasy. And often after a minute or two, they become very emotionally involved and they start to talk to that person who is on the other side or uh, a higher force or some, you know, an angel or, or whatever helps them. And often it's a very big emotional release because like you said, there is something there that is very, it's a deep sadness and there is a, a loss and there's some grief uh, around the person or the subject. So it's very freeing to be able to, to give voice to that. And often there is a lot of um, forgiveness involved, understanding, empathy. Um, so I truly love that. So that's one of my favorites when they talk to someone who they've lost in some way, uh, because it gets so deep and they get so much emotional release of it. And, and you can see it afterwards because their eyes are glittering and it's, uh, they feel so amazing afterwards. Yeah, I, I feel, you know, what really helps, I think when, you know, you're working with people like that, and of course I work with people like that. Yeah. Is, you know, the honoponopono, um, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's used for different reasons, but within grief therapy, it's, you know, acknowledging to that spirit, to that person, I love you. Thank you. Yeah. I forgive you. Um, what's the other one? Um, and, and goodbye, you know, yeah. I'm missing one. Um, but, and goodbye, you know, because it says, you know, goodbye for now, but you're always around yeah. me kind of thing. How do you incorporate um, spirituality in your work or do you, or do you not? Um, I do incorporate it, but I do it uh, if the person wants it. And then how do you so do it? I do, it, it's like, uh, it, it just happens, you know, because often the person is giving me a, a small little, you know, indication that they open up the spiritual door. Uh, so therefore I gradually move into the more spiritual talks if I notice that they're open for it. Uh, but I often wait until they give me the signal. Uh, but I also do get a lot of, you know, messages from above. I always say that I can tell people a little bit about what the problem really is. And what I notice, I get some information about the solution. Uh, or if they have have a problem with a specific person, I can say that, yeah, but you know, it's because of this or that the person is like this. And they say, how do you know? And sometimes I just say, oh, it's just experience <laughs> because I know the person doesn't believe in the spiritual world. But more and more often I say that, oh, I just know, I just kind of, I get this kind of information from the universe. And, and as long as it helps you, I, I just want to share it with you. 
Yeah, I think every great healer, you know, whether it's conventional yeah. or non-conventional, it's the ability to kind of let the universe, God, heaven, whatever you want to call it in and those downloads yeah. in that, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the great healers are the, the ones that are intuitive who can pick up what's not being said, you know? Yes. So, so that's wonderful. Um, what drives you to continue doing this work? Cause it's tough work. It's really tough work sometimes. Um, but you know, I think that my, my purpose of why I'm doing it have changed over time. Uh, but nowadays, I, I just have um, a deep feeling that I want to serve and I want to, to help people to, to become free, really free of all the things that are limiting them. It could be outside things, it could be inside internal things, but I really would like them to, to, to feel more free because that's what I have gained from my personal um, development over the years. I've been working with myself for about 20, 22 years, and it's been a bumpy road sometimes and ups and downs. But what I've learned is that the more I do the work, the more free I become. And the more free I become, there is a peace within me and there is more joy and um, there's a feeling of more enjoying life and I, I won't say that it's that all the time because I have a bumpy road myself sometimes but it's easier to find that peace and find that joy of life so that's what I'm striving for and I would love for other people to feel that too well you know I, I hope more and more people do find it through you and your book um, when Thank will you. your book make it to the U.S.? So right now there is uh, a version of the book on Amazon Kindle, but it's just a version to try it out. So the real, the real book is coming as an ebook in July and as a paperback online and in all the and all stores in the U.S. in October this year. So the ebook in July and in October the paperback will hit the market. Well, you know what? I hope everybody um, picks up your book when it's out Thank and they you. can get the sample now. Um, and if they're in Sweden, they can certainly look you up. Um, in the meantime, I know that you'll make it here on a book tour and that would be really exciting for all of us. Um, you know, and everything you bring through and all the help you give people is just so absolutely wonderful. And, and I thank you on behalf okay. of everybody. Thank you so much for coming on, Karen. I loved having you. you on. I loved having our conversation. Um, and to everybody out there, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, please like, share, and comment, and be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thank you so much. Thank you.